Good afternoon, good evening students. I hope you're doing good. Welcome back to the channel. I hope you are staying safe as well. As you can see, today I have decided to start a new chapter on this channel for a new field of study that we call psycholinguistics. As usual, when we start something new, we shall define it first in order to get you familiar with the topic itself. Then we are going to go more specific in the upcoming videos. Anyways, before I start, as usual, I invite you to like the Facebook page of this channel in order to be notified whenever I post something new and also subscribe to my channel if it's not already done. That would encourage me to do more and also help you out during the period of exams. So without any further ado, we shall start with the definition. So the word psycholinguistics has actually two words inside. We have psycho, which comes from the word psychology, and linguistics, of course, from the word linguistics. Okay? So to define it in a simple way, psycholinguistics is when we combine psychology and linguistics. Okay? But for a specific purpose, it is in order to understand the relationship between the human brain and language in general. Okay? So when we uh, when, when we are speaking about psychology, we are speaking about the human brain. And linguistically speaking, it's the language. Okay? So it deals with whatever happens in one's brain, or in a human being's brain, of course, uh, whenever they produce or receive language, both written and spoken. So it deals with, like I said, with everything that happens in your brain as a human being, when you utter words or sentences or whatever, um, anything that has a meaning or when you receive it, okay, both in a written way or spoken way. You should know that it deals also with the, uh, with the devices in humans' brain that process and represent languages in the brain, okay. It tries to understand what gives a human being to acquire I mean, what is the mean, what is the, the thing that gives a human being the ability to acquire and use language properly? And also, it tries to understand how does a human being acquire and use language properly. You shouldn't forget that. It is also known as the study of psychological aspects of language. This is when it comes to the human brain, because psycholinguistics deals with the study of the brain as well. So, and in other words, we can say that experiments investigating, so what are the topics that this kind of study uh, de uh, deals with? We have, for example, the short-term and long-term memory. But of course, you should note that there are other topics that this field or psycholinguistics deals with, okay? Then there is something that we call Chomsky revolution. Okay, when it comes to Chomsky and revolution, um, it's pretty simple if you want to um, to explain it uh, in few words or in few sentences. We have Chomsky, Noam Chomsky, a great linguist, by the way, criticized behaviorism in general. Okay, because according to the behaviorists, learning any kind of learning, not only languages, any kind of learning, is a result of stimulus response. This means the role of the mind is excluded. So according to the behaviorists uh, or according to the philosophy of behaviorism, when you learn something, language or anything, uh, you do not include your mind, which means you do not need your mind to learn, to learn things. So Chomsky has given the brain the importance it needs in the study of human sciences in general. You know, after the revolution, the mind after the Chomsky revolution, of course, the mind was always the center of study to any study that is related to the understanding of the human being. So after this revolution, um, when, when, whenever um, a scientist or uh, a linguist one wants to study something that is related to a human being, the mind is always included and the mind is always the center of that study after the Chomsky revolution, of course, because before, when the 
behaviorists used to dominate the field, they excluded the role of the mind. This is why they depend on what we call the stimulus response, stimulus response. Therefore, you will develop a habit or what we call the habit formation. And this is how um, we learn according to the behaviorists, of course. But Chomsky, um, we can say that he was against that uh, kind of theories or that kind of um, ways of learning. So he criticized it and he gave the mind the place or the importance it needs to study the human or any human um, science. Okay. Then we are going to talk about the most important thing of, the, of today's lecture, which is um, psycholinguistics roots in education and philosophy. In this section, we are going to, uh, let's say, focus on the most important thing, which is the cognitive uh, processes, okay? And the cognitive processes, it refers to a number of tasks that the human brain does, um, or you can say that there are procedures made by the brain to process all the information we receive from the environment. And thanks to these cognitive processes we are allowed to explore the world around us and interact with it of course so without these um, cognitive processes we won't be able to understand or interpret the information that we acquire from our environment from nature from people in general so this is the environment we won't be able to understand all that information and we won't be able to interpret it properly and therefore we are not going to be able to interact with our world anyways so I'm going to give you five let's say cognitive processes but there are plenty of them you can find them on internet or you can just read the book of Chomsky and he has given some of these um, processes anyways the first process that I have chosen is the sensation and perception so sensations in general are brought by different stimuli in our environment okay the stimuli first reach our senses and once we receive this information perception takes over and we start interpreting these stimuli okay and perception by the way is the ability to capture process and make sense of the information that our sense receive um, in other words we need perception in order to interpret the information that our senses receive from the environment okay then the second point is attention and attention basically it's about um, the fact that life has many stimuli happening at the same time okay so maybe you are sitting um, in your living room with your family so many things can happen at the same time but you want to focus on one specific thing this is why we say that we are capable as human beings we are capable of centering our attention on the stimuli that interest us in general um, to exemplify uh, you know some actions such as walking and chewing for example require little attention but other activities such as uh, speaking okay Re this speaking requires focus especially when we are giving a lecture for example as teachers when a teacher is speaking uh, he or she has to um, pay attention to what they're saying because they are teaching so speaking requires focus if you compare it with chewing or walking in general the third cognitive process is um, reading so cognitive processes in reading in general so when we are dealing with a book and I'm sure you will relate we must recognize the letters okay avoid distracting ourselves with irrelevant stimuli relevant like not important or some things that we don't need and we need to remember the words we are reading in order to associate what we have read with other contents that we learned previously so for example I am reading chapter 1 then I will move to chapter 2 I should be um, aware about what happened in, uh, in, the, in the previous chapter which is chapter 1 so this is what we call the cognitive process in reading okay so it's your brain trying to associate what we read with what we are reading with what we have already read um, and then we use our cognitive processes from the beginning 
to the end of the book this is very important as well okay then the fourth the fourth point which is cognitive processes in writing the same thing with reading we need to ignore the noises that make it difficult for us to write to make our writing readable to remember what we have written in the previous paragraphs to worry about the spelling for example and in addition we also need to properly plan what we want to write so all these let's say aspects of writing uh, ways of writing the most important things to take into consideration when we are about to write or when we are writing are actually produced or made by these cognitive processes which are concerned with writing then the final point uh, which is um, language in general humans are capable of producing and comprehending different sounds and words and they combine okay we combine as human beings we combine different letters and phrases and expressing with precision what we want to communicate okay we have this kind of ability not only in English or Arabic or any other language of course and we even use our body language to communicate this is also considered as one of the cognitive processes which are or which exist in our minds right so that would be everything for today's lecture in terms of definitions of psycholinguistics and also the scopes of psycholinguistics so this is basically what we are going to deal with in the upcoming lectures so if you have any kind of question feel free to ask them in the comments below or contact me if you want on my Facebook page um, Otherwise, I tell you stay safe and see you in the next video. Peace